Hey, what's going on, everybody? Adam from RM Marketing and Estimator Tools. Um, got a really cool question in the GHL Mastery Group today by Graham Hurst. And this is the kind of stuff that fires me up. It's like, I've got a problem. I need a solution. I can't figure out how to do it. Uh, well, 99% of the time, you can do it. You just have to know where to look. So let's, uh, let's go in and share the question here from Graham. And then we're going to show you how to create the solution for it. So this is in regards to calendars. So I have a question come in today that stumped me. One of my clients is a physio and his clients do block bookings of 10 sessions. He has a calendar to book them in, and, but has, a, has specific instructions to send them for each appointment. So session one, message one, session two, message two. Um, how's the best way to do appointment reminders without using 10 separate calendars? So this is, uh, I, I've actually done this before, which is why I know exactly how to do it. Um, but again, if you don't know what you can do inside high level with all of the different functions, you would have no idea how to do this. So the answer to the question is that you only need one calendar and you need two new custom fields to manage this. So I'm going to, I've already kind of gone in there. I've tested it. Um, there's a couple of things that we're going to have to, you're going to have to use your imagination on because I didn't want to go and build out this entire structure for this video, but uh, we are going to dive right into how to do this. Now, before I do, if you're watching this live on Facebook, let me know you're watching it live. If you're watching it on the replay, let me know you're watching it on the replay. And if this is helpful, I appreciate the likes, the comments, the all the things. Uh, that's why I do this. I do this to help you guys. And if I'm not helping you guys, I need to know. So let's dive right into it. So let's share the screen here. There we go. Okay. So in order to calculate, we need, we need to do basically two different functions here. We need to know how many appointments they booked. So in James's case, um, they order packs of 10, basically. So his physio, they will have an order of 10 sessions. So we need to know how many sessions there are remaining. And then we also need to know how many appointments they've actually gone through. Um, so we created these two numeric fields. One is for appointments remaining. One is for appointment booked. And the reason that we do numeric fields is because now we can do math functions. So let's dive in to the workflows here and I'll show you kind of what we do. So we'll go into Graham's folder here. Uh, first things first. So this is where you need to use your imagination a little bit. Um, what we're doing here, so this would technically be like an order form or somewhere where they would buy their sessions and then they would go from, you know, but let's just say they, they ordered 10 sessions. Now what we're doing here is we're updating a the contact field for update appointments remaining to 10. So however many appointments they purchased, that is the number that we're going to plug into this field here. So again, you could have order forms of five sessions, 10 sessions, 15 sessions, 20 sessions, doesn't really matter. Um, you just need to determine, okay, which form was it that they purchased from and how many sessions did they purchase? So we're going to update that first one to 10 right out of the gate. So Let's test this. Um, I built it. I have not tested it yet. So let's go ahead and test it. We're going to run the test. And we're just going to go and we're going to make sure that that appointment's remaining number is now 10 inside the contact record, which I have all the confidence in the world that high level is going to do it right. There you go. So appointments remaining equals 10. So next up, is we need them to book an appointment. Now, I did not put the appointment trigger in here. However, I'm going to assume that you know how to add an appointment trigger to this. So um, you can either do, you know, in this particular use case, I would recommend not auto confirming the appointment. And here's why. Um, so let's go appointment status. I'm going to have to grab one of my random calendars here in this demo account. Appointment status event normal. We're going to go in calendar and we're going to go, let's just say it's a one hour class. But the status here is going to be new, which means that in your calendar settings, you will not have allow auto confirm appointment. Um, and I'm going to show you why in just a second. So pick your calendar appointment status is new. We are not going to auto confirm the appointment. The reason for that is that the very first condition that I put in here is that the appointments booked is less than 10, meaning they still have appointments that they need to attend. If they are at 10 and they need to purchase more, 
we don't want to confirm that appointment. We want to send them to another notification to tell them to buy more sessions. So the way that this logic works is that obviously if the appointments booked is less than 10, you can go this way. But if it's more than 10 or 10 or more, you're going to go this way. And then obviously you'd send them an email saying, hey, we can't confirm your appointment. Um, click here to go and buy more sessions or something along those lines to get them to basically buy more, um, buy more sessions. Now, here's where kind of all the magic happens here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that appointments booked field. So we're going to, we're using a math function here and I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're just going to go math operation. You're going to select the field that you want to update. So in this case, we're going to update appointments booked. We are going to add one to that field because this is the first appointment that they've booked. Now, if they've already booked one, that field is already going to be one. And therefore, if we add one, it's now going to be two. So then we're going to take appointments booked, add one, and then we are going to update the appointment booked field. So that means if we go back to my contact here, appointments booked right now is zero. So the first time I run through this workflow, it's going to be one. The second time I run through this workflow, it's going to be two. So that's how that math function works. Now, obviously in your settings, you're going to want to make sure that you allow multiple so that they can go through this. This is the same as an appointment reminder workflow, um, but we're just going to do a couple different things here. So appointments booked plus one. That's the first step. The next step is your appointments remaining. You are going to subtract the value of appointments booked. So that is going to mean that if your appointments remaining is 10, which it is, it's going to subtract one and then that's going to be nine. And now you can use that to say, hey, you've got nine more sessions remaining. Um, and you can use that in some of your messaging, which is one of the things that Graham had asked about. So you're going to take that appointments remaining, subtract your appointments booked, and you're going to update appointments remaining. So now your appointments remaining is going to be nine. So that is that step there. Now, obviously the next time someone goes through it, it's going to do the opposite and it's going to subtract one more. Um, and actually what we should actually be doing here is we should actually be subtracting just one here because why isn't it doing that? I have to delete that. As I'm, as I'm talking this through out loud, I'm realizing that, okay, well, if appointments remaining equals nine and appointments booked now equals two, well, then you're going to lose a session. So you just need to subtract one from appointments remaining um, instead of using the other value. So correcting my own mistake live on Facebook and on YouTube. How fun. Okay. So there you go. Now, the next step is where he wanted to have different messaging going out for different appointments. Now, this is a bit of a pain in the ass to do, but you just add all of the conditions based on the appointments booked equals um, and then the value. So appointments booked equals one equals two equals three equals four equals five equals six equals seven equals all the way to ten. Um, those are your if else statements. Now, that's obviously going to use this value. So whatever that value is, it's going to check and it's going to go down that specific path. Now, something to note, um, if you have something, let's just say that is more than 10. So you can only have 10 if statements on any given line. So let's just say you had a bundle of 15 appointments. Well, the easiest way to do that is that you would ha now have to come over here and just add another if else here and then keep on going because basically what would happen is that if none of these conditions match, it's just going to go to the none route. Um, so if none of these conditions match, if this, this number is 11, it's going to go to none. And then you would have another if statement here starting at 11 all the way to whatever you want. So you just have to create another string or another line if you wanted to do more appointments than bundles of 10. But now what you can do is you can obviously go and start doing your email sections here. And then inside the email sections, you can say, um, thanks for booking your first session. You have, and then we're going to go custom values, contact, custom field, and we're going to do appointments remaining, nine appointments remaining, and so on and so forth. And then what you can do instead of, instead of going and doing this, you know, a dozen times, you can literally just copy this first message and then have, you know, however many appointments remaining, which this is going to be the same 
um, message every single time. Um, so technically, now that I'm again saying this out loud, technically you don't need all these if statements. Um, you can just use your appointments remaining to let them know how many appointments they have remaining. Um, but if you wanted to have different messaging, which is what James, or sorry, Graham mentioned to me, um, you would want to do it this way where you have an individual email going out as the first email. And then you can do a go-to step um, for the rest of the appointment reminders if you wanted to kind of keep those all the same. So there you go, guys. Um, if you wanted to purchase blocks of appointments um, and track and calculate how many appointments um, have been done and how many there are remaining, that is how you would do it. And then obviously with this section over here, uh, you can get a little bit more creative with this. So um, lots that you can do with Go High Level when you know where to look. So this, uh, you know, this question came in our free group and we do this kind of stuff all the time um, in our VIP group. And so if you have any interest in getting some hands-on help, um, we are raising the price of the VIP group as of June 1st. Um, and so right now is the best time to get in. It's $97 a month where we get in and we do this stuff hands-on with you to help you solve problems that either you or your clients have inside Go High Level. So if you're thinking about it, you can go to agency.estimator.tools slash join VIP and you can get some hands-on help um, with myself and Brendan in your back pocket if you ever need any custom solutions like this built out in your own Go High Level account. So with that being said, we will see you guys on the next one. Take care.